Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek. We have a testosterone-filled one today with this. Yeah. While we talk about a romance novel movie. Um, we are... Guys don't want to... We're a bunch of big softies. A little bit. Well, some of us are. Some of us... <laughs> Some of us are real men like like uh, Griffin down there. He's the real man, and the rest of us are just kind of, you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we are discussing the movie Red and Red 2, um, the the franchise that could have been the ultimate tentpole, but wasn't. Mm. But we'll get into that. I'm Dub, and I'm here with Skeeter, and I'm here with Griffin, and I'm here with Tyler. How y'all doing today? Doing good. Doing phenomenal. It's Saturday morning. I'm awake and talking about cool stuff. How can I not be better? Well, there you go. Doing doing fantastic. So first off, Griffin, I want to hit you first on this one. Um, we had to do some changes, and you you super volunteered to do this movie of Red, um, which means I'm guessing you have a huge love for it. Tell me what it is going into this before we start you know, beating it up. What is it you love about this movie or movies? Um, Besides the fact that it's the only, they're the only action movies my mom will sit and watch with me. And, <laughs> because and it's a romance novel. I got you. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs> um, my mom hates movies. Uh, so she, the fact that she'll sit down and watch this, but besides that, um, I watched it when I was probably like 10. And I, I don't know the concept. Bruce Willis is amazing. John Malkovich, um, obviously Morgan Freeman oh in the first gosh. one. They, it's like you Keith got Urban. powerhouse is right there. Yeah. So it's just, it's a. If anything else, um, all the the story uh, beats the problems aside. Like it's it's a great movie, and and I love watching it. I, I watch it at least once a year. It's so weird. Like. I don't plan on it, but it, it just happens. So, well, yeah, this is one of those just movies that are so rewatchable. Um, so first thing, first thing I want to hit on this before we start getting into it. Now, y'all know I am a huge fan of watching movies with a different perspective. For instance, we watched um, Solo, and we decided Solo is a really good movie if you watch it in a different perspective of that you're watching it as a TV show and you split it up. And then it becomes a fantastic movie. I'm a huge fan of watching watching movies in different perspectives. Now, this one, we have, what, what did we figure out? Four different perspectives you can watch it under? Yeah. So we have the, the straight-up 80s action movie, which is incredible. We have a rom-com. Um, and we'll get into that in a second on that one. And we have a straight-up comedy. And then on top of it, we also have, this is... Without the graphic parts, this is a trashy romance novel. Mm -hmm. And it's all seamlessly blended, too. It just completely. And, you know, I never picked up, and I know that it was kind of a um, undercurrent with a, with they have the trashy novel covers that show up and do the breaks and all that stuff. But I never watched it like that. And I kind of watched it this last time. And I'm like, I can totally see this now. This is a different mm -hmm. movie. And it's so much fun. Um, but let's let's kind of go into what this movie's about. Red, retired, extremely dangerous. Was originally a comic book. Now, if you just love the movie, don't read the comic book because it has nothing to do with the movie. It, it's in name only. Uh, Frank Moses is there, but you don't see the Malkovich character or them getting the team together. Or the, it's just a guy that's the Punisher, only old. Um, not bad. It's just that's what what it is. I mean. It didn't hold my interest for a comic book, so I'll get that. If somebody liked it, I'd love to hear from you. Did anybody read the comics at all? No, I didn't. I, I just told Griff kind of last night. I, didn't. I, I told Griff, I was like, dude, I, I think I'd, I'd just like to see it, to thumb through it, you know, maybe just to kind of see the the, the different perspective of the, the, the paper to the yeah. film. It, it's worth looking at. I'm not a big fan of the art, which turned me off right away. Um, it sounds like they kind of did what uh, Marvel did with Gal uh, Guardians. You know, it took this this yeah. deep cut, this odd oddball, and had people perplexed on why you're even trying to make a movie of it. 
Yeah, well, like but they had, it, you know, it turned out great. Like they they made the comic book Cowboys versus Aliens, which wasn't even a good movie. But they made the comic no. to storyboard the movie. That's the only reason they made the comic book. So this mm-hmm. is even though they're they're different stories, I feel like this is definitely like um, comic book movies are kind of getting big right now. Maybe we should make one there. Their yeah. other guy in the in the thousand dollar suit, you know. <laughs> well, it worked. I mean, hell, it it did, it, and this it's great. Now, before we go into why this isn't the franchise that I wish it was, we'll get to that towards the end. Let's let's kind of talk about the movie a little bit. Let's talk about some of the characters. We have Bruce Willis, um, and let's let's just kind of sit on these for the a second. Bruce Willis was especially in the first movie, so amazing. Um, I feel like he nailed the part. He was either right before or right after the whole nine yards. If you guys ever watched that movie, uh-huh. very similar characters. This one's a little bit more hardcore, but the way he played it was very with Bruce Willis. You know what you're going to get at this point. He's not going to surprise you. Yeah. But what did you guys think of Frank Moses as the old guy coming in and just destroying it all? So in my opinion, um, I'm a fan of John Wick, uh, so I'm seeing a retired version, uh, shorter, much less hair of John Wick, um, kind of like, you know, I mean, if you think about it, look at John Wick, the first one, you know, the guys come into his house and he just lays waste to everybody, mm-hmm. much like Bruce Willis does in this one, I think. Bruce Willis I, it, as Frank Moses is spectacular. Um, but I just think that like, I look at his role and I'm like, Oh my gosh, totally John wick. If you think about John wick, like looking at it, where does he go to get like his coins and his weapons? All of a sudden he's hmm. banging a hole through the yeah. floor, pulling out, you know, with a sledgehammer, pulls out his stuff. Like I'm all, Oh my gosh, this is crazy. But we get that John Wick, or we get that Frank Moses that we see from his character from the whole nine yards. We get this kind of die hardy, hardcore. Yeah. You know, I loved it. It was awesome. Tyler? Oh, no. His his character is a blast. Um, I usually have a little bit of an issue uh, showing that, that guy who's just so good at his job that, he, you, that he's unmatched and you can put up you know no fight against him he can just with his eyes closed take care of you um because that's uh, it's almost no fun you want to see him struggle but i think they did it really well here because you know he he found his limits the the younger guys are coming up you know and testing him and I, especially yeah. that scene where he hears um carl Urban's character you know oh he's a, the dude in the vaults like oh he's a tough guy you know he, Immediately yeah. goes to his office one on one, like yeah, like the ego kicked in and he had to yeah. find out, you know. And that, that's just so much fun. Griffin, what do you think? What do you think about Frank Moses as a character? I think as as a character, he's you know he's everything. You know, Bruce Willis is you know uh, in you know the eighties and in the nineties. You know, it kind of was a household name. You know, you knew like uh, I. I wasn't there, but when, when watching those films and like the way that I, you know, dad brought me up watching them, it's like, you go to the movies to see this person, to see this actor. Mm-hmm. It's like, you don't go to see the movie you go to see. It's like if Bruce Willis was in it, he, you know, sold he was the a tickets. diehard. Yeah. It was like, you go to see the Bruce Willis movie. You don't go to see that movie. And so I feel like he carries this film, um, in that but the the other cast you know like john malkovich obviously he's just like there's no match but i do bruce willis's character i i don't think he oversells it um and it helps from the rest of the movie where you know carl urban's character he's trying to get him he's trying to find him and he's like really who is this guy this guy is not that big of a deal i can take him whereas you know they're not afraid of him mm-hmm. like in you know like how a dad said like john wick everybody's afraid of him because they know he's coming he's gonna kill everybody but in this one they're just like he's the best agent we ever had like 
he gets stuff done. So yeah. I don't know if you stand a chance. So now and that leads me to the two things I don't like about this character. I mean, everything you guys said is correct. That is that is why we love this character. The things I have issue with is um, he's like this super agent and, you know, he's been in the field. So he's, you know, he lived that James Bond life. And then he has this relationship with this girl and he's awkward. He doesn't know how to read a sign. Does she really like me? That just, that's him more far fetched than him putting the bullets in the microwave or in the, in the stove. Well, he's living that agent <sighs> lifestyle for so long. I mean, just regular socializing and dating and stuff is exactly part of the repertoire there. So. Well, every, everybody, e- even the, the uh, Malkovich character knew, knew, you know, his, his, his way around a relationship. And yeah. I thought that, I thought that was a little weird to be honest with you. And now the other issue I have is now the way he looked in red two, he looked probably 15 years older. He actually looked retired. The, f- the first movie, I mean, he, ha- he has his fresh Botox in, you know, he's, his face is tight. He looks too young to be this older character. But the second movie, I think it was a better representation of what that character should have been age wise. I could see it. So the, the, that, that's my issues with Frank Moses. Now let's talk about the female character, which was played by Mary Louise Parker. We have um, to. <laughs> yeah, this is this is one one more of those movies that did not understand how to write a strong female character. Um, because she she has she has moments that are definitely um strong, like when she when she breaks away, break breaks the bed and all that other stuff. But then it, she just seems kind of a mindless puppy dog for Frank Moses. I just want to go on an adventure. And the age difference was really off-putting. That would be like um, the dad that dates his daughter's best friend in high school. That's that's that age difference, and it was a little creepy. I didn't find that. I, I didn't think it was icky. I mean, I thought it was much. She looked old enough. You know. <laughs> well, she 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 could, she could drink a beer, so I think she was de- <laughs> <laughs> she was in her twenties at that point. I think. The mindless puppy thing, though. I mean, she you see it in the beginning of the movie. You know, he starts reading that romance novel that she's reading. Yeah, and it's about a woman sucked into the life of a CIA agent or whatever. You know, so she's just living out her her fantasy there. Yeah, so that so- that all kind of fell together for me. <sighs> This could be this could be almost like I mean, literally, she's reading a romance novel. She falls asleep. She's dreaming these movies. Like that's, that's yeah, that's where this could totally go. Like that's a fifth element. Uh, get it <laughs> of yeah. this movie. So like, oh, I, I think we could we could literally say that. But look at like it's almost lazy writing in a way because look at the whole nine yards. Yeah, the female character in the movie shows up at his front door, and she's like, "Oh my God, you're Frank, blah blah blah, blah or whatever his name was in that movie." Yeah, but and Amanda Peet like, was a better her. actress. Oh, she, and she pulled it. She oh, yeah. pulled it off a lot better because she she was strong in regardless of those moments. But this one, she wasn't like she was his love interest. Yeah, he chased after her, and all of a sudden shows up at her, you know, in her hallway. And, you know, after these conversations over the checks. So, like, it's kind of opposite role, whatever, and then blows up in his face. Yeah. Um, so do we want to talk about her anymore? Because I think she is the weakest part of the movie. Do you have anything to say about that, Griffin? Yeah, I'll say that if she serves any purpose um, to give to be the... um the wild card here. I think that she's a great motivator for uh for Bruce Willis's character, if anything. I think yeah. that it reinforces his character in the struggles. It might not be all it might not be uh good per se, because I, I do I do agree with you guys when it comes to that, but if anything they they have anything, it it is that yeah. Okay, I, I I have to say, he she does drive one of the greatest scenes in the movie, and that is when um, Urban gets her. Yeah, they they capture her and she's being interrogated, 
And then he gets the call from, from Frank and Frank's sitting in his living room and he's like, I oh, will yeah. take everything you love from you. That was an amazing and, scene. Like, the, not because of her, yeah. Yeah, because the, the tables were completely turned, he was like, okay, you whoop me in my office. Now you're going to do this? Like, okay, you're, you're real. Yeah. I'm going to stop playing this game with you. She's, now She's the puppy from John Wick. <laughs> that's dark <laughs> done that's it okay so so quick back back seat um or monday what, what are we going to call this monday morning screenwriting how what i think would have really worked well with this character is if you take the helen mirren character don't make her but you can give those aspects to the girl i think that we have a lot better movie and it's i think we have a, a super action movie at that point because I think I think uh, Helen Mirren was incredible in this movie. Oh, she was absolutely. everything that I wanted her to be. She was just that ditzy yeah, love could, interest. Hel- Helen Mirren could have stood alone. Stood. stood she needs her own movie in this. Yeah, with, oh, with yeah. kind of along the same lines of a character, but like we get this young version of Helen Mirren in Sarah. Like yeah. you know, all of a sudden she turns out to be this freaking. You know, Lady Jane, G.I. Joe. I'm yeah. not saying anything that Bruce Willis may play the same character in, in every G. movie Joe yeah. with a different name. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, but that's fair. Okay, um, now let's talk. Um, Carl Urban, can he play anything in any movie and make it better? This and dude, I will watch it. Yep. Oh my gosh! And this is on this this rewatch that I had. I forgot how good he was. The only, the only struggle that I had was in the very beginning of the movie, and Griff and I talked about this last night when we were watching it, was he really, really struggles with pulling off the 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 American, the the English accent with his because he's he's Aussie. So when you could really tell that he's fighting that long a in you and but he pulls it off really well like and if that's the only thing that i pulled from it like yeah. dude yeah. is a beast in whatever he plays from star trek to lord of the rings like he's even dread which was a horrible movie yeah he pulled it off like a beast now what i'm what i'm loving about his character not his acting but his character is the way that they gave him a complete turn from the bad guy to the good guy without changing his moral compass at all. He still believed the same things he believed. He he what he didn't turn his back on his country. He was yeah. you know he made a complete turn without changing anything about him. And that's that's gifted screenwriting right there. I don't know if anybody else picked up on that. That was that is tough to do. It was almost like in this movie, they in both of them, it was almost like they started writing pre-coffee and cocaine or whatever they do in, in that world. <laughs> in the writer's room. Yeah, we got you. Right. So before the the mountains of the of cocaine and coffee showed up, they were like, let's just write nine, the whole nine yards over again. And then Demi mixed, left. Oh, yes, and time, then yeah. Demi left. Everybody was like, boom. And they were like, <laughs> Bam! Let's write the baddest movie we ever saw, and that's all. Oh, that's what happened. We're like, what just happened? And that's this movie in a nutshell. There's some Tarantino aspects to this because you know, like Pulp Fiction, how they just kind of put the stories in wherever another same character. Um, they put the stories wherever they fit, and they did that with the scenes, and that's why, like what I was talking about earlier with the different perspectives, that's why they all work together because they, it's a bunch of movies put together with one storyline mm-hmm. so was it me or so we had the first scene with the bullets in the frying pan the whole bit there you mm-hmm. know and then they just freaking swiss cheese this whole house which was cool mind you that was a great but scene i'm not gonna where lie. the heck were the cops in like they just have a, <laughs> they, he must live out of town because there was nobody there but apparently this stuff goes on a lot around his town <laughs> but it's, it's the CIA. Don't you think that they can probably say, uh, stay out of the neighborhood or we will destroy you? That 911 I, I system mean, would know. be inundated with phone calls. <laughs> yeah, and they're probably like, yeah, we know. It's cool. Don't worry about it. 
But like, I mean, I know a dude that drives a security truck in Las Vegas that would probably be there quicker than than those cops. But <laughs> like the like the did anybody else see like this was my favorite part that really kicked off the action sequence for the rest of the movie. The door opening, car sliding sideways, Bruce Willis oh, yeah. stepping oh, out. I love that the, scene. Uh, I love it. Don't, don't ruin it. Yeah. No, that lit the entire action of the yeah. whole rest of the movie. Like, it was I so 80s. It. And yeah. then Red 2, it's in reverse. He gets into the car. <laughs> so trans- so, 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 so yeah. awesome. Now, I, I'm going to blow your guys' mind for a second. Did you know that Red 3 has was not only in planning, it was made, and nobody saw it? It's been out since 2016. I just read it in IMDb. I'm like, I really? never even heard of it. I knew they were making it or planned on making it. I didn't know it was out. 2016, it's been out. Did they get Bruce what? Willis and everybody? <laughs> yes, Bruce Willis is in it. Oh, yeah, ch- check, okay. out, check out your IMDb, <laughs> IMDb page. And I'll, wow. I'll go to suggestions like, what? Yeah, NBC was supposed to make a series too. I don't know what happened to that. Now that said anything about that, I would be down with because that way you could do the comic book because you have you can have story arcs on everybody individually, yeah. and that's what I think this movie was missing. It was too much Frank Moses, even though we had these super interesting other characters. I but he mean, didn't. I didn't feel like he overshadowed everybody though. No, I mean they, he did. I don't think he overshadowed, but. I wanted to see more of the other guys because right. they're so good. Absolutely. So um, speaking of another brilliant one, we got Morgan Freeman. Oh. Um, very interesting concept that you think he dies in the beginning and then he doesn't spoiler. And then he dies at the end, but right at the beginning of the movie, he tells you I'm going to, I'm dying right now. I'm, I have cancer, yeah. stage four cancer. I got, you know, I'm sh- you knew I right then. short he for was, this world. He was a red shirt. But the way they did that was that was that's an interesting choice because you know that he, you know from the get go that he's going to sacrifice himself because well he's going to die. Mm-hmm. But that it didn't take away from the character. I mean, and Morgan Freeman. I mean, he could play a rock in in, in the school play, and <laughs> I believe the rock more than I believe anybody else. Right. So, what do you guys think about the, the the placement of the Morgan Freeman character? And I wish they wouldn't have killed him because I would have liked to have seen him in the other movie. Oh, he's fabulous! Yeah, uh, the, the the dirty old man in the the dirty old man, stuff. yes. <laughs> but I think that the fact that he was you know terminal, uh, it it made him more lethal. Yeah, know? it did because he he knew you know a guy who's going to die. Is more dangerous than a guy who he had more dead, gravity when he life. talked because yeah, of that. Absolutely, his threats meant something. Yeah, and you knew he wasn't gonna. De- he wasn't dead when they didn't show him. That. Yeah, so that, that kind of they could have convinced me a little more, but his yeah. character was so fun and in his Morgan Freeman man Morgan Just to Freeman see him in oh a role gosh. like that. You know, yeah. you go from Shawshank and you know freaking. Uh, uh, count, the countless other roles where he's more sappy and everything, and then you see him doing this, threatening people's lives and yeah, handling business is so good. So, so Griffin, as a as a student of film, tell us what you think about the the Freeman performance and the the writing for it. I think it is great. Um, he's it, it's so cool because he um, there's something I didn't notice the, all the other times I watched it is that he. He is like old. He he can't like run like Bruce Willis or mm-hmm. or uh you know like when in all those scenes where they're like running um away from the RPGs and and all those people attacking him at the shipment yard and stuff like that. Um, I think that they played it very well, and um you know and he explains it. You know like I like you guys brought up. He's like I'm 80 years old. I got stage four lung cancer. He's like I'm just going, you know. So or. I, I think it was lung cancer. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, I, I think that they wrote him in very well and he served the purpose. And yeah. um, uh, especially in the, you know, in his final moments where he's just like looking, he's like, someone's got to make the hard choice kid, you know, like that's, it's just, and they look at each other. It, there was no question. It was just yeah. like, okay. You know, so it was really cool. 
He didn't think much of Frank Moses first time he saw him. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't <laughs> help that. Um, and I'm glad they didn't. They, they he yes he was sick and you know because he said it and I'm glad but I'm glad they didn't have him play sick. He wasn't coughing and you didn't have right. How do how do I say you didn't have sympathy for him? Um. You know he's gonna die, but it's not like oh I feel so bad. He's he's coughing. He's you know, and they could he could have very easily made that the focal point. But he said I'm sick. I'm dying. I'm gonna live the rest of my life however I'm gonna live it. And I I like that a lot better than playing sick. If that makes mm-hmm. sense. It was a badass that is just waiting for a key moment. Yeah. To go ahead and sacrifice himself. Yeah. Okay. So two more characters I want to talk about. Um, John Malkovich. Oh, now, amazing. John Malkovich is the guy that does the conspiracy theories that are like way, 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 way off to the left or right or whatever. And eventually it comes out that, yeah, he was right. Every one of his, mm-hmm. every one of his theories are right. Uh, <laughs> just so good. Absolutely. That's, um, that's the, one of the best roles I've seen him play, I think. It, it, I mean, with with the eyes and just the mannerisms and oh, so good, so fun to watch. Yeah, he actually, you know, I mean, this kind this kind of guy does exist if you've been in the military long enough. They're, oh, I'm sure. You know, um, yeah, so good. Which I, I'll, I'll talk about my favorite scene after. Um, Skeeter, what did you think of the Malkovich character? Um, from the get go with the crossbow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they're walking away and he goes, let's go to the house and talk about it. She's and Sarah's like, um, the house is back there. And he's like, that's the decoy. Yeah. And they walk down the, the, you know, the 57 the, Chevy, yeah. the 57 Chevy through the stairs. And you're just like, what? And then he goes into that vault and opens the vault and is like, let me get the file on whatever. It's a piece of and paper. Yeah. Like it's paper. <laughs> You're like, what the heck is in there? You're thinking, oh, this dude's gonna go in there and rock some computer craziness, and it's paper. <laughs> and you're, then he, from the rest, from that point, when he goes, I finally get to get the pig, and like, and you know his, something's gonna happen with this pig, <laughs> dude. It's on the rest of the movie. His character, you like, he sucks you in, and even if it was a horrible movie. Malkovich being Malkovich through this whole movie keeps you there. Like yeah. he keeps you in your seat going, what is this dude going to do next? Yeah. You know, the lady at the airport or at the airport with the rental car thing, yeah. that whole, Oh my God. We'll get into like, that one in just a second. I want to talk about that scene <laughs> in specific, but I think we can all agree in a field of just monster good actors. He stole the show. He was the best. Yep. He was, he was definitely the most valuable player. Um, look at his entrance. Yeah, <laughs> go blaring out of the freaking bushes. There, he was the only <laughs> one that I think was written right a hundred percent of the way through. The other guys did. There's some hiccups here and there. His character from the start to the end was written perfectly. I think. What Griffin? <laughs> you got that look. You got something to say on that? I'm just thinking about it. He's like, Frank. You can't trust the system. Satellites. <laughs> cell phones <laughs> and he's just it, he's just great yeah uh, he, he's he's the most memorable character in these movies period um i honestly i mean i don't remember the girl's name i remember him i remember everything about him i do, you know on the rewatch i had forgotten the richard dreyfus character i didn't forget about him you know it's just one of those just so memorable and so good before we go on to, to dreyfus I want to talk about the scene, which is I have two favorite scenes in this movie. One is the car scene that we already discussed. And the second one was the 50 Cal versus the missile launcher. And that scene, epic. when you watch it and he shoots the, shoots the rocket and it actually shoots the lady from behind and she goes flying out a hundred feet. And it is like, Oh my gosh, whoever choreographed this is mm-hmm. freaking a genius. I I don't know what it is about that scene and the pig thing because it's got the anticipation for the whole time. It's like, so is he? And you start thinking, okay, is he just crazy enough that he has to have his pet? Or, and then that's what I thought at first. Out. Yeah, Skeeter. Okay, so a 
the hand grenade with the stock of the <laughs> the baseball bat grenade launcher. Yes, um, and blows that dude to kingdom come. The I mean everything about that that scene particularly was great. Hyper unrealistic, um, but awesome. Yeah, super unrealistic. Uh, I feel like not a single person, CIA trained or not, other than the cast, the main cast of this movie, could hit the broad side of a barn with a stinking softball uh, shooting an automatic weapon. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know if anybody else picked that up, um, but. I, it's troopers. It's okay. Like one of my other favorite characters, and I don't know if we're going to talk about him because I know we're going to talk about Dreyfus, but Brian Cox. Oh like, yes, I'm sorry. This about dude him. is Scottish. He's our favorite, uh, you know, commanding officer from Super Troopers. Super Troopers, like, like, oh my gosh, this dude rocks the the Russian, the Mother Russia, like to my cousin you know and then he's yeah. like he's not dead like that's he's showing you russian like but i just feel like this dude he's another huge part of this movie that keeps you in your seat and i i love him like his whole love interest like you have two love interests in the movie yes like him and, and theirs was more interesting it, it kind of was by far uh-huh. by far when he ca- keeps calling her did he, just, did he call her a rabbit bunny like, bunny, bunny. bunny. Like, Dude, just amazing. Like I this movie, like I said, coffee and cocaine really turned this movie around. <laughs> I fully no, yeah. I I'm I'm sorry I didn't actually mention the the Brian Cox. He was so good. It just felt he's another one of those that he again, you, you kind of forget about him because he does he does his job so well. But I don't think this movie would be as good without him. I don't think anybody else could have played that role. And it's 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 kind of a nothing role that he made into something. Mm-hmm. Which I always have a huge amount of respect for that. Like you said, their their love story was more interesting. Yeah. I, I'm they, glad they it, added to that in the second one. Yes. In this whole series, they pulled huge, huge talent. I mean, in two? Who did yeah. they pull in two? Academy Award winning actor freaking anthony hopkins are you kidding me yeah like what? who was a fantastic another fantastic character uh, played that so well yeah um let, let's talk richard dreyfus now i've met mr dreyfus on about five different occasions and the smarmy character that he is he's not acting um he just said hey richard just say these lines however you'd say them okay mm-hmm. that's yeah uh in my experiences with him i've I said I've, I've met him a few times, so usually I don't say it because people have bad days, and I so I never usually say it when somebody's having when someone doesn't treat security the best. He was interesting, uh, <laughs> but with that being said, this is when you remember how funny Dreyfus is, uh, how good he is at playing a weasel. I mean, he oh, was yeah. he was you know that scene in Mr. Holland's Opus when he's getting ready to cheat with one of his students. That's who this character is, and it's just there you go. Yeah, he literally plays this character in The American President. Um, if you've ever seen that movie, it's uh, let me remember. Um, oh, shoot, I, I, I'm drawing a blank, but The American President, older movie, um, mid probably mid 90s, one of my wife and I's favorites, but. Richard Dreyfus plays a senator who is becoming to run for president. He's the Republican. He's the, you know, he's the guy. But that character, literally snarky, kind of uh, pompous a little bit, um, is the same dude. Very, yeah. like, you could tell something's going on. Like, he's got a dirty past, but you don't really want to say anything. But, yeah, totally. I loved his character. Yeah, just really... I believed him. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, he, he is, um, you know, personal things aside, he is a phenomenal actor. You know, there's a reason why he's has the career he has had. You he shot person, me. You, know? <laughs> you shot me. <laughs> really, dude? 
you know, and you don't care. She's like, what a jerk. Um, okay, so now what I want to kind of talk about a little bit. Now, this movie, I think we can. Uh, well, I will say that it is 20 times better than The Expendables. This could have been yeah. the franchise that The Expendables was. And then we get to the second movie. And while it's good, and, pro- and some, some would argue better than the first movie, I think they changed too much. Um, as far as visually, it doesn't look like the same movie. With sequels, I, I want the story to be different, but I don't want it visual. I want it visually to look the same. I want to be in the same universe. The, all the fonts change, and that's a big one for me when they change fonts in between movies. The way they did the, the transitions, it was just too different. And I think that's honestly what stopped this movie from being... The this is we shouldn't be talking about expendables, we should be talking about red and red one through six because right. they could have brought in the same actors in these movies. Because expendables to me was just a knock bad knockoff of, of red. What do you guys think about why didn't it become it, it's just it's almost a cult movie in comparison to you know what it should have been? Why do you guys think it is? Love Let's start with story. Griffin. I would start with Griffin on that one first. Well, I, I think that, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of, I mean, like you said, it, it got made, obviously. We had no idea. We were talking about it last night, you know. The, um, but we, it, you know, the one thing about the business is that it's, uh, it, it's a business. Um, maybe the second one wasn't received as well as the first one. Um and they probably just, you know, decided to can it maybe. But I mean, it seems like they made it. Um, who knows how far in post they got? But uh, probably a lot of studio interference. Um, yeah, I don't. I, it's Summit. I think did the did the yeah, films, which is a minor league com- in comparison to. Yeah, I, I mean, The Expendables. Though I I watched the first one with Dad when I was like. 11 12 and i it just wasn't it didn't do anything for me i think my i don't i didn't watch any other ones uh, and i think they're not that good of movies i know i don't enjoy them at all i think stallone called up arnold and was like hey you want to help me produce this movie because no one wanted to fund it yeah i think it was just a big name i don't know i i don't care for them and i probably won't watch them again unless we do a podcast on them (laughs) but um but the reds we watch like once every year yeah unintentionally it's so weird tyler what do you think i i think part of it had to do with the you know the storyline the the love story that yeah willis and his little lady had oh what do you do yeah it's not believable (laughs) you keep pushing her along as somebody who's like oh where are we going next where we what are we doing next or she's a puppy or do you suddenly now she's suddenly good at being an agent and can help out in you know what i mean uh i I don't think you could have taken that too far so they might have wrote themselves in the corner there maybe um but then again you could you could have concentrated more on the other characters too so yeah I, i haven't seen the third one so I don't know. No, I apparently nobody has. Because I say we all love this movie and we had no idea. Was it I was looking for it because I'm like, oh, is it gonna be are they ever gonna make the third one? And then I just saw that I'm like, oh right. It did. And I can't find it on iTunes, I can't find it anywhere. I'd like to see I I want to cut in real quick. I think that they could have done like you you guys just said, that's a good point. They could have turned it into a franchise if they would have Kept the same characters, so mm-hmm. keep you know Bruce Willis's character, even his lady. Um, but for the third one, they could have put them off to the like the side and exactly. made it about Malkovich. They could have mm-hmm. he could have focused yeah. on him with something that happened with him. And done because, an origin story on him, yeah, or yeah. something you know, and have like flashbacks and the the plot be about someone trying to come after Malkovich, and he goes to Bruce and. Um, his his lady and be like yeah someone's after me and they're like okay well we'll help you but they're not the main yeah. characters yeah. anymore and they get all the same characters so that would be really good yeah and i, I want to say this if anybody is friends with anybody that was involved with anybody in production for red i would love to talk to them about what happened uh, we're not going to grill or anything else because obviously we love the movie but i want to know what happened because 
it deserved so much better. Skeeter, what do you? What about you? What do you think? So, I mean, you mentioned stinking Expendables. So this was an action movie for action movie actors. Um, it wasn't a action movie for people to go see, even though people did see it. Um, it was for those people who love Schwarzenegger, who love Stallone, and all the different guys. Red, as soon as they added the comic book genre to it, mm -hmm. I feel like that's when the world changed. Like, that's when everything changed for this movie. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it was a comic book movie. When did the second one come out? Like, think about the whole timeline. You know, comic book movies, for comic book movies, unless they were an actual one of these guys, Yeah. you know, um, or even the Red Hood back here behind me, um, they were you got kind of pushed to the back shelf, you yeah. know, and that's we could have done a different thing. Like I would have loved uh, an origin story with Malkovich's character. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like let's go right before the LSD incident and walk mm -hmm. into that. Let's see Guatemala. Let's see oh what my gosh. Yes. This about because they talk about stories the entire time. And and I tell you what what they could actually do what they could do a whole season like this. They could actually all be sitting around it you, the episode 1 and you do 10 at 10 at 10 episodes. Um they're sitting around drinking at a bar or a restaurant or something just these guys uh for some reason they're they're at a funeral or some something you don't know who who died. Cool, we can do that. So they they're sitting around literally telling stories and then they they just do a flashback. They're going to tell one story a week. This is what happened here. And then you have a new cast. You have the old cast still there that we love that aren't going to have to work a lot. Then you have a new cast that comes in as the younger them and does it. I am in a hundred percent for this movie. I think this is or this TV show. This is more interesting than. And I say, and I can't fault the movies because I think they're great, but I think that maybe it's the marketing um, it just, they just disappeared. Uh, even Red 2, I had to search it out. I didn't, I don't remember it being in your face. Cause that was, and that was the days that you'd watch the previews and wait for the next movie to come out. And it just, I don't remember it being there. So I don't know. It could be a lot of things kind of. <laughs> no. Okay. Studio. Uh, I think. It, yeah. It's all business stuff. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Money, uh, viewers, how many people watch it, wh who are interested, the actors. Um, it, it, you know, it's a lot of business. That's what drew me away from wanting to be a part of the business. Yeah. Do you have something, Skeeter? You think you're about to say something. Okay. Trying to figure out internet. Okay. Um, so let, let me ask you guys this. What is it about this movie? What elements just completely work we've talked about what doesn't work okay let's stay off of that because we figured it out um <laughs> <laughs> three two um so what i want to talk about now is what did work what elements did you love about these movies um we, we let's let's we, we've gotten all the negative out let's let's talk about what did you love about these movies in general um tyler let's start with you um, just the seamless blending of, you know, the fun rom-com with the amazing action. Yeah. Um, the, the, the action is stellar. I mean, hell, even Expendables and stuff is like big budget, you know, scenes and stuff. Still, I don't think held a candle to some of the sequences in, in this movie, you know? So yeah. it was just, it, and being able to blend all that and the comedy, it is, it, it was really, really fun time. And the rewatchability is definitely there. And yeah. watching this cast do what they do best, you know, I, I, I really need to see that third one yeah. now. Skeeter, <laughs> give, me, give me what you think real quick because we're going to have to wrap up pretty quick. But I just, I, I think, like Tyler said, the action, um, some of the comedy stuff, Malkovich. Um, Malkovich kept me hooked and made me want to come back and see 
red too. I mean, yeah. what what was this guy going to do? What craziness was he going to bring to the screen? Um, and just the stories, I loved it. I, I felt like this, the different stories that happened inside with yeah. the different actors. I mean, just awesome. I loved it. It was a great movie. Griffin. Yeah, I mean, I think a, a lot of the show we've been talking about the differences between you know uh, this movie and the other ones. Um, I like to kind of bring it full circle. I mean, it you know you have uh, you know Bruce Willis's um, I forgot her Sarah. So Sarah, I we never talked about it's us. All these times in in the movie, yeah, that's good. All actually. these times. In the movie, if she serves any purpose, it is that it's she is the audience because they'll go to torture someone, and she's like, "Are are you gonna do that? We're we're doing this right now, okay?" Uh, uh, and then they're like, "Yeah, it's normal. Stop. That's how we do things." They say it a lot. This is how we do things, you know. So, um, but I I feel like what separates it is that it's trying. Like you're watching this action movie, mm-hmm. and then it flips on you. It turns into this this romance novel it turns into this comedy it turns into this all right we're serious you have bruce willis and then john malkovich comes out and he just totally breaks it he breaks the genre it's a genre breaking film and i think that's what makes it stand out yeah that's really good now i want to mention one thing that we haven't talked about at all real quick and that is the way they did the instrumentation the the or the um the soundtrack if you will because I mean, they only had like one rock song on there, and I don't even remember what it was. But I liked how, depending on which perspective you were going off of, if you're on rom com, the music was really rom com with the xylophone sounding thing. On the action stuff, it was '80s metal. Um, I thought it was great how they they really did read the scene and they didn't give it one, you know, stamp. They were something different. I really enjoyed that, and that's something that a lot because they want to have a theme in most music in most movies. And I get that, but this one should not have had one. They did yeah. a great job at that. And you that, saw that amped up a little more in the second one. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. I hope that they can refresh this with the same character somehow, but it's the thing. I think yeah. the only way it works is a TV show. And that way you have the, the smaller stories. I think it needs to be more, a little more contained. That seems to be the formula these days. Yeah, well, let's everything's let's, getting a TV show. Fingers crossed, but di- it won't go on Disney Plus. Right. Um, I think it was Image Comics. I'm not sure, and I, they don't have a contract with anybody. So, uh, if anything, it'll probably end up on Prime or something. Fingers crossed. Yep. Yeah, that, that's well. That's the same with yeah because they did Invincible, so that can work. Well, Image yep. must be owned by DC then. Uh, right? No, it's creator. They... It's creator owned. Oh, okay. That's the uh, I did see when you opened up when I opened up looking for it on on Roku, it was on every Showtime streaming service. Okay. So possible there, maybe uh, it definitely Prime because yeah. they're they're mixed in with everybody. So I would think that's where it would be. So we're definitely going to keep our fingers crossed that maybe we can get how get what this movie deserves. Yeah. And and I'm, we're saying this not because we didn't like it, but because we did. And I think that's that's an important conclusion to draw on this. I'm going to have to wrap us up because um, I got something I got to do. So with that being said, go to our um, website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use the com. We paid extra for it. You can buy cool t-shirts like this. And you can see Tyler's t-shirt. We got a bunch of them in. We got girl, girl shirts. We got tank tops. We got V-necks. We got fitted, blah, blah. Um, Check it out if you like that sort of thing. Check out our Patreon. We are we're going right now. We're going through every Marvel movie in chronological order, and we are having a Ooh. blast. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's see. I think you're Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel. I think we are on. Uh, oh, I forgot which one we're going to be on this week. So check it out if you, if you. It's the Patreon. We really hope it's worth your time. It's you get a ton of extra content, and we appreciate it. it helps keep the show running. Um, like us. Um, comment on our stuff share us it helps us out a lot if you're listening to us on the audio go to your podcatcher and please give us five stars and give us a review again 
gets gets us in front of more eyes, and we appreciate it, guys. So yeah. until next time, I'm Dub. I'm here with Skeeter. I'm here with Griffin. I'm here with Tyler. Keep on geeking on, guys. You have been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.